Generally, nature selects which organisms have genes that allow them to pass on said genes into future generations. That's called natural selection. Humans can take a similar power into their own hands wherein they select which organisms pass on genes. That's called artificial selection. This has been done with dogs, cattle, horses, sheep, corn, tomatoes, broccoli, and a huge host of other organisms. We do this for various reasons food, transport, hunting partners, etc. And one of the more interesting questions in evolutionary biology is that if we rewound the clock of evolution, how would life proceed again? In other words, how many evolutionary events are the result of chance? We all know the story of how dogs were domesticated. Gray wolves were domesticated by humans into dogs, and recent evidence has pointed to the conclusion that dogs were actually domesticated independently on two separate occasions, in Eastern Asia and Western Eurasia between 6,400 and 14,000 years ago. With domestication has come a suite of traits as explained by science writer Jason Goldman, Quote, Domesticated animals of widely different species seem to share some common traits. Changes in body size, in fur coloration, in the timing of the reproductive cycle. Their hair or fur become wavy or curly. They have floppy ears and shortened or curly tails. Even Darwin noted in On the Origin of Species that not a single domestic animal can be named which has not, in some country, drooping ears. Drooping ears is a feature that does not ever occur in the wild, except for in elephants and domesticated animals possess characteristic changes in behavior compared with their wild brethren, such as a willingness or even an eagerness to hang out with humans." Close quote. Why? It would seem that breeding for tameness includes a suite of traits, an idea that was tested on the silver fox by Russian geneticist Dmitry Belyaev. Remember in Guilty by Association that Lysenkoism, the primary biological pseudoscience under the communist USSR, claimed evolution and genetics to be bourgeois science. Thus, researchers were not allowed to openly conduct experiments on them. However, as the Communist Party waned, genetic testing became allowed again, paving the way for Belayev's work on foxes. Belayev's work has shown that many of the traits associated with dogs appeared in the domesticated foxes, such as increased curiosity, droopy ears, short or curly wagging tails, extended reproductive seasons, changed fur coloration, and changed skull, jaw, and teeth shapes. There was also a range of anatomical and behavioral changes, and Belayev predicted that the appearance of those behavioral traits must be rooted in genes, at least to some extent. With regard to behavior, for instance, the period during which the tamer pups socialized was longer than the period during which the more aggressive pups socialized. And the tame pups opened their eyes sooner after birth than the aggressive pups. Also, tamed foxes cackled and panted, but never coughed or snorted, while aggressive foxes coughed and snorted, but never cackled or panted. It would appear that the suite of traits characteristic of tameness are associated with a lowering in plasma cortisol and adrenocorticotropic a hormone, or ACTH, both of which are involved in the fight-or-flight response. The 1999 paper, Early Canid Domestication, the Farm Fox Experiment, Foxes Bred for Tameability in a 40-Year Experiment, exhibit remarkable transformations that suggest an interplay between behavioral genetics and development, points out, quote, Thus, selection for domestication gives rise to changes in the timing of the postnatal development of certain physiological and hormonal mechanisms underlying the formation of social behavior, close quote. Understandably, it would also appear that these physiological and hormonal mechanisms don't exist in isolation. They are woven together into polygenic complexes where the adjustment of one gene affects how other genes operate. Many polygenic complexes are involved in early development, known as ontogenesis, 
and the lead genes in autogenesis, at least for mammals, primarily pertain to the functioning of the nervous and endocrine systems. Thus, selecting for tameness, a neurological condition, affects hormone production, as we just saw, which in turn affects other systems. Even the neurochemistry of the foxes was affected. Tame foxes have noticeably higher levels of serotonin than the non-tame ones. So, researchers have been able to simulate in a few decades what originally took hundreds of years. Now, instead of passively observing the remains of ancient dogs in the archaeological record, we can directly test the genetics and behavior of representative canids to get an understanding of what biological changes took place. We understand that various traits of domesticated animals don't simply result from chance, but from a cascade of effects caused by human selection. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.